Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Doctor's Corner. Today we are going to discuss one of the very important concept in anatomy, circle of Willis. Okay? So, we will discuss what exactly is this circle of Willis, how it is formed, where is the location of this circle of Willis okay? and if possible the clinical significance. Okay? Now, it is related to the blood supply of our brain. Okay? So, what exactly is circle of Willis is? It is related to the blood supply of the brain. So, basically four major arteries okay, which supply the brain. What are that four major arteries are? Two vertebral arteries. Two vertebral artery means right vertebral artery and the left vertebral artery. Similarly, two internal carotid arteries. Two internal carotid artery, two means right internal carotid artery and left internal carotid arteries. So, together they form the four arteries. So, these four arteries will supply the brain. Okay? So, how exactly they will supply the brain is the branches of these two vertebral arteries and two internal carotid arteries, they form one circle, a polygonal circle like this at the base of the brain. So, this polygonal circle at the base of the brain, it is known as circle of Willis. Okay? We will discuss in detail how exactly it is formed and what is the exact location here. So, circle of Willis is basically the circle of the blood vessels that is the arteries which of uh, which is formed by two vertebral arteries and the two internal carotid arteries. Okay? So, this term circle of Willis it is also known as circulus arteriosus circulus arteriosus. Okay? Circulus arteriosus. Okay? So, this term circle of Willis was coined or named after a British physician or the English physician Sir Thomas Willis. Okay? Sir Thomas Willis in the year 1664. Okay? So, uh, on his name this term circle of Willis was coined. Okay? So, coming back to our topic the circle of Willis that is the blood supply of the brain if you can see in this diagram basically three main arteries will supply the brain that is the anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery. So, you can see this blue color structure that is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. So, it is a branch of vertebral artery. Okay? Ultimately, vertebral artery will divide into basilar artery and it will give this uh, branch of posterior cerebral artery. However, so this part of the brain which is uh, colored in the blue, it is supplied by the vertebral artery. Similarly, this other parts that is yellow and red by the anterior and middle cerebral artery respectively. So, this part of the brain, it is ultimately it is supplied by internal carotid arteries. Okay. So, the branches of this internal carotid arteries are uh, anterior cerebral arteries and middle cerebral arteries. So, this two right side right internal carotid artery, left internal carotid artery and two vertebral arteries. Okay. Right vertebral arteries and left vertebral arteries together four arteries they will supply this uh, brain. So, how exactly I have already described you by forming this circle of Willis. Okay. Now, let us discuss in detail the origin origin of all these blood vessels. So, it is these four important blood vessels. So, first we will discuss the origin of vertebral artery. Okay? From where this vertebral arteries, two vertebral arteries right and left will, uh, the, that is the, from where they are originated and how they form the circle of Willis. Similarly, we will discuss about the origin of the internal carotid artery. Okay? From where exactly this is formed okay, internal carotid arteries. So, first we will come to the origin of the vertebral artery. So, we will come to the uh, very basics uh, uh, from where they will uh, from where they are originated. So, basically they are originated from the arc of the iota. Okay? So, how exactly I will just uh, pen down or just draw a line diagram to make the concept more clear. So, this is the arc of the iota. I am just drawing a very rough diagram arc of iota. Okay, to understand the branches of the arc of the iota and uh, from where these four important uh, blood ves vessels originate. Okay? So, in the arc of the iota, mainly three bl important uh, blood vessels or the arteries will originate. What are the three important uh, blood vessels or the arteries? 
one is the brachiocephalic trunk okay on the right side brachiocephalic trunk then we have the left common carotid artery left common carotid artery and we have the left subclavian artery left subclavian artery okay left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery now how to remember this branches of aorta just there is a mnemonic a b c s what is this a b c s is a is for arch of aorta b for this brachiocephalic trunk c for common carotid artery and s yes here stands for subclavian artery okay just to remember the things okay just a mnemonic how to remember this branches from the arc of the aorta okay however that's not uh, the part of our current topic what we are discussing now so what we are discussing here today is the about the uh, circle of willis okay from this branches of the arc of aorta how exactly this uh, internal carotid artery and the vertebral artery will originate okay let us discuss now so from this brachiocephalic trunk on the right side most of the times it is divided into two two branches okay two important branches one branch is the left common carotid is yes, sorry right common carotid artery left common carotid artery is an individual branch okay so it is right common carotid artery i'm just Uh, writing in the short form right common carotid artery okay so another one is left sorry right here right subclavian artery right subclavian artery so left subclavian artery is an independent independent branch from the arc of aorta okay so this right subclavian artery and the left subclavian artery will give rise to the right and left vertebral arteries okay so this right subclavian artery with the help of this blue color i am just trying to show you the origin of the vertebral artery so from this right subclavian artery there is origin of right vertebral arteries right vertebral artery and this is the from left subclavian artery there is origin of left vertebral artery okay this is the most important thing we should remember now so this is our focus left vertebral artery and the right vertebral artery from so where they are arising they are arising from the right subclavian artery and the left subclavian artery respectively okay similarly if we see this right common carotid artery and the left car common carotid artery they will ascend up okay right and left common carotid artery they will ascend up and ultimately they will bifurcate into external and internal carotid arteries okay so to, they will bifurcate into external and internal carotid artery so the right and left common carotid arteries this is the external carotid artery of the left side so this is the left internal carotid artery okay left internal carotid artery so this is the right internal carotid artery okay and this is the right external carotid artery so this common carotid artery is divided into right and left internal and external carotid arteries so this one right internal carotid artery and the left internal carotid artery now we got this four arteries hope you understood the origin of this arteries okay so right and left vertebral artery from the right and left subclavian artery and internal carotid artery from the common carotid artery so so all these four arteries they will ultimately enter into the skull and supply the brain how much part of the cardiac output so nearly 15 percentage of the cardiac output okay cardiac output goes to the brain okay now after originating from here both this uh, four of this arteries will ascend up and ultimately they will enter into the brain and finally they form the anastomosis a circle known as circle of willis okay circle of willis so what is the location of this so after knowing the origin let us discuss the location of circle of willis so origin from this uh, we have discussed uh, 
so location so this circle of villis is present at the base of the brain at the base of the brain okay as you can see in this diagram in the base of the brain okay around the interpeduncular fossa so at the base of the brain more specifically you can see in this diagram where it is present location in the inter peduncular fossa so forming a six sided polygon of the arteries which is known as circle of villis or the circulus arteriosus okay so it lies in the interpeduncular subarachnoid cistern okay and uh, contributes to the most of the arterial supply of the brain so interpeduncular fossa so where exactly present is it is in the subarachnoid space okay subarachnoid space subarachnoid space this is also very important subarachnoid space so basically where there is a csf that is the space in between the uh, arachnoid matter and the pia matter okay that is in the subarachnoid space that is subarachnoid cistern so this is the location so we have discussed about the origin of the uh, this blood vessels as uh, that is from the arc of the aorta and the uh, this one location now after originating from this uh, arc of aorta that is from the subclavian arteries and the common carotid arteries how this uh, uh, four arteries will enter the brain let us briefly discuss this first we'll discuss about the vertebral arteries okay the vertebral arteries how they will enter into the brain what is the course of the vertebral arteries after its originating from this subclavian arteries okay so right and left that is the two vertebral arteries so how they will ascend so basically this vertebral arteries will travel into the uh, cervical vertebra that is the two uh, vertebral arteries they will enter through this uh, cervical vertebra transverse foramen you can see this transverse foramen through this transverse foramen right and left vertebral artery that is upper six cervical vertebra transverse foramen so through this transverse foramen this uh, right vertebral artery will ascend up similarly here there is a left vertebral artery that's why the name given vertebral artery that is it will transverse through the transverse foramen of the upper six cervical vertebra so uh, then ultimately it will enter into the skull through the foramen magnum foramen magnum okay so after entry how it will divide and all we'll discuss later this was all about the course of the vertebral artery now let us discuss the course of the two important uh, internal carotid arteries internal carotid how they will enter into the brain this is important two internal carotid arteries so as we have seen they have they arises from the arc of the aorta from the common carotid arteries so this two internal carotid arteries so this one is the internal carotid artery so two internal carotid arteries okay right and left so they will enter through the carotid canal okay so there is carotid canal here so through the skull carotid canal on the outside and it they will form a bend like this okay so uh, it will medially it will turn into cortico tympanic branch of the middle ear it will give however so this internal carotid artery it will ascend up and it will enter the brain through the foramen lacerum okay through the foramen lacerum so this one it has a course in this petrous part of the temporal bone so this one internal carotid artery internal carotid artery after its entry into the carotid canal it has some course in this petrous part of the temporal bone and it will ultimately enter into the cranial cavity through the foramen lacerum okay so this diagram will give you more clear picture so outside that is external opening is through the carotid canal okay and this is the skull bone this is the skull bone which i am highlighting with the black color now that is the temporal bone petrous part of the temporal bone so it will enter into the cranial cavity through the foramen lacerum okay remember this course okay we will discuss the details some in some other video when we will discuss about the internal carotid artery right now remember this one internal carotid artery how it enters the brain so it will enter into the carotid canal and ultimately it will enter into the cranial cavity through the foramen lacerum now after entering into the uh, the brain how exactly this forms the circle of villis very important thing 
the essence of today's lecture formation of this circle of willies from this four important arteries now till now what we have discussed is how this four arteries uh, are originated and how they have entered into the brain now ultimately this four arteries will form this circle of willies so uh, how this four arteries will form this circle of willies so this is the circle of willies which is shown on the display right now so i'll just label that four arteries which form the circle of willies this is the right internal carotid artery so how it enters into the uh, cranial cavity through carotid canal and ultimately to the foramen lacerum similarly this is the left internal carotid artery sorry this one the main one okay this is a branch this one this branch the middle part okay this is the right internal carotid artery and this is the left internal carotid artery this one this bigger so this artery left internal carotid artery so right and left internal carotid artery and here at the base what you can see this is the right vertebral artery right vertebral artery and this is the left vertebral artery so ultimately this all this four arteries they form this circle of willis huh? so now you are seeing so many branches here so we'll discuss one by one what are the various uh, branches of the uh, arteries and the, how they form this circle of willis okay so now i'll highlight the branches first of the uh, vert vertebral arteries okay first the branches of the vertebral artery and how they form the circle of willis branches of the vertebral arteries okay how they form the circle of willis okay so now vertebral artery so as they ascend up as they ascend up you can see as they ascend up you can see in this diagram so this vertebral arteries from this left vertebral artery i am now you highlighting this left vertebral artery with the green color marker so this one and again the right vertebral artery again highlighting with the green color marker so right and the left vertebral artery ultimately unite ultimately unite to form one artery that artery it is known as basilar artery okay we'll discuss about that basilar artery also now and the this one this is also very important artery so ultimately vertebral artery forms the circle of willis with the help of this basilar artery only we'll discuss about this basilar artery after we discuss the first branches of the vertebral arteries so i hope you are understanding so this right and the left vertebral arteries they will unite to form this basilar artery so let us discuss few branches of this uh, uh, what uh, right and left vertebral arteries so first and the first more important branch is this anterior spinal artery you can see there is one small artery here which is descending down by the union of the right and left vertebral artery so this is known as uh, this branch is uh, known as anterior spinal artery anterior spinal artery so anterior spinal artery is a branch of vertebral artery so one first branch first branch of the vertebral artery is this anterior spinal artery so this is the anterior spinal artery which is descending here on the anterior fissure of the spinal cord okay now so first branch of the vertebral artery is anterior spinal artery okay anterior spinal artery so one branch we have discussed now okay there are so many branches but we are discussing the important one okay similarly similarly this vertebral artery will form uh, so will form one more very important branch known as posterior inferior cerebellar artery okay so this actually circle of will is location at the base of the brain that is at the level of the midbrain that is the uh, midbrain uh, so at the level of the brain that is pons medulla and mid brain okay so i'll just uh, draw the demarcation of that pons medulla and uh, mid brain okay so here i have drawn one black line one more straight horizontal line i will draw here just a rough demarcation just to know where exactly in the brain stem 
this will be there okay so i am with the help of the blue color ink i'll just write the parts of the brain stem that is mid brain so just roughly this is the region of the mid brain this is the region of the pons and this is the region of the medulla as you know this pons and medulla again on either side of this there is a very important uh, structure that uh, structure it is known as cerebellum okay so on either side of this there will be cerebellum cerebellum okay cerebellum will be there cerebellum anyway so the first important artery what we have discussed is the anterior spinal artery which originates by the union of this right and left vertebral artery similarly this vertebral artery gives one more branch this second branch it is known as short form picard it is posterior inferior cerebellar artery which will supply the inferior part of the cerebellum because cerebellum is closely associated here okay so the second important branch of the vertebral artery is picard that is the posterior inferior cerebellar artery posterior inferior cerebellar artery second important branch also known as picard that is the small uh, short form okay now there are two branches which is known as posterior spinal artery on the posterior aspect this vertebral artery will give the on the posterior aspect this vertebral arteries will give the branches they are known as posterior spinal artery so this posterior uh, spinal artery that is actually it is the first intracranial branch which arises from the vertebral artery so either it will arises from the vertebral artery this there are two posterior spinal arteries okay so spinal medullary arteries is this and this one is this posterior spinal arteries okay anterior spinal artery is only one in the on, that is running anteriorly Uh, and uh, posteriorly there will be two posterior spinal arteries this posterior spinal arteries are also found from the vertebral artery and sometimes from the posterior inferior cerebellar artery okay so another branch is posterior spinal artery actually it is the first branch first intracranial branch that arises from the vertebral artery or sometimes from the posterior inferior cerebral artery so posterior spinal artery so vertebral artery will give anterior spinal artery posterior inferior cerebral artery and posterior spinal artery three arteries now the fourth artery it also gives to the medulla so as you can see in this is related to the medulla is also there so this it will give some branches to the medulla so that it is called as medullary arteries or several minute vessels which will supply the medulla oblongata okay so it will give the medullary arteries so medullary arteries or small branches to the medulla then finally it will also supply the meninges so there will be meningeal branches so ultimately there are five important branches you should remember the word for the of the vertebral arteries so what are the five branches anterior spinal artery posterior inferior cerebral artery cerebellar artery remember cerebellar artery posterior spinal artery medullary arteries and meningeal branches so five they will give okay four to the medulla and then one more is to the meninges so five are branches are given by this vertebral arteries okay now these vertebral arteries at the lower end at the junction of the pons or medulla okay or the lower end of the pons they will uh, form they will form okay i'll use one black color highlight uh, no not black color i'll use some other color highlighter to label this thing so i'll use some other purple color now or we'll use the uh, yellow color okay so now this with yellow color which i am highlighting the main one single artery so this is known as basilar artery okay now this basilar artery it is formed by the union of the right and left vertebral artery okay so this basilar artery also gives few branches so let us discuss the branches of basilar arteries basilar artery so there are many branches we'll discuss the important one here again so first one is the pontine branches so pontine branches are the numerous short slender para median vessels which pierces the pons to supply it 
so the pontine branches it will supply the pontine branches okay as you can see this diagram so it is closely related to pons so this basilar artery will supply the pons so pontine arteries okay then there is anterior inferior cerebellar artery you have seen this one pica it is the posterior inferior cerebellar artery which is the branch of the vertebral arteries so this basilar artery will give one more important artery which i am highlighting with this uh, yellow color so this artery is ica that is anterior inferior cerebellar artery anterior inferior cerebellar artery anterior inferior cerebellar artery okay so this anterior inferior cerebellar artery arises close to the lower border of the pons and runs backwards okay lower border of the pons and it will run backwards and laterally usually ventral to the 7th and 8th cranial nerve then it forms a loop over the flocus of the cerebellum and peeps into the internal acoustic meatus for a variable distance lying below the 7th and 8th cranial nerves okay now after this there is one more very important artery which will arises from this basilar artery so the third important artery which arises from the basilar artery is the labyrinthine artery okay labyrinthine artery third one is labyrinthine artery so this artery is a long slender branch which arises either from the basilar artery or sometimes from the anterior inferior cerebellar artery itself it can arises from this anterior inferior cerebellar artery okay so it will accompany the vestibulo cochlear nerve and enters the internal auditory meatus to supply the internal ear and it is an end artery okay after this two important branches are superior cerebellar artery okay which is close to the superior border of the pons so this one superior cerebellar artery superior cerebellar artery that is the fourth artery okay we'll write here the branches of the basilar artery fourth important one is superior cerebellar artery superior cerebellar artery so this as i said it will arises close to the superior border of the pons superior border of the pons it is upper part of the pons and runs laterally below the oculomotor nerve and winds around the cerebral peduncle below the trochlear nerve to reach the superior surface of the cerebellum where it supplies so it will supply the superior part of the cerebellum so see for cerebellum uh, which arteries are there and Ant anterior inferior cerebellar artery then we have the posterior inferior cerebellar artery pica and ica it is anterior inferior for inferior surfaces two arteries are there anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery and uh, for the this one and for uh, uh, superior surface it is superior cerebellar artery similarly we have the posterior cerebral artery the most important branch which will form the part of this circle of willis from the basilar artery is the posterior cerebral artery now we are coming to the main branches of these two important arteries which will form the part of the circle of willis so now the first part of the circle of willis till now what we have discussed the other branches now the first important branch which will form the circle of willis is the posterior cerebral artery which will pass us laterally along the superior border of the pons parallel to the superior cerebellar artery okay parallel to the superior cerebellar artery we are now highlighting this artery this one with the yellow color marker on the right side i have marked now on the left side i am marking so this one this is the very important artery which forms the circle of willis that is the fifth uh, branch here of the basilar artery that is posterior cerebral artery okay posterior cerebral artery which is most important one which will form the circle of willis so till now what we have discussed the formation and the branches of this one so ultimately this vertebral arteries it will send so many branches then basilar artery will form so many branches so this posterior cerebral artery of basilar artery basilar artery is nothing but it is formed by vertebral artery so ultimately posterior cerebral artery will will form the circle of willis along with the 
branches of the uh, cerebral part of the internal carotid artery. Okay. Now, let us discuss the most important one the internal carotid arteries, okay, cerebral part of the internal carotid artery. So, we will discuss the branches of this internal carotid arteries right and left. Now, I will highlight this with the blue color one. So, this one right internal carotid artery and the left internal carotid artery. So, now what are the branches of this internal carotid artery and how they form this circle of Willis. So, first one it will form one uh, small artery, it is known as ophthalmic artery, okay, which will ultimately supplies the eye, the ophthalmic artery, it will enter the orbit through the optic canal to supply the structures of the orbit including the eyeball. So, this is the first branch. So, we will discuss, uh, we will write here the branches of internal carotid artery or more specifically the cerebral part of the internal carotid artery internal carotid artery cerebral part. Okay. So, the first important part is uh, is ophthalmic branch that is the ophthalmic artery. So, it will arises immediately after it comes out of the cavernous sinus okay, and makes a U shaped bend. Then there is important artery posterior communicating artery. First, I will write down then we will discuss where exactly it is posterior communicating artery. So, posterior communicating artery is this one posterior communicating artery arises close to the termination of the internal carotid artery okay? at the termination of the internal carotid artery. So, this one with the help of blue color left side what I am drawing and right side also I am drawing. So, this it is the second important branch from the internal carotid artery that is the posterior communicating artery. It runs backwards and anastomosis with the proximal part of the posterior cerebral artery. So, this was the posterior cerebral artery. So, this posterior cerebral artery will anastomose with this posterior communicating artery, Okay, this second one. Then anterior choroidal artery, one more small branches which I am highlighting with the blue color one now. So, this one the third branch of the internal carotid artery cerebral part, this is the anterior choroidal artery. So, anterior choroidal artery, anterior choroidal artery. So, it is a long slender branch which arises just distal to the origin of the posterior communicating artery. So, this artery it is called as artery of cerebral thrombosis also. Okay, so, due to the long subarachnoid scores and its relatively small lumen, this is called as artery of cerebral thrombosis, clinical significance, anterior choroidal artery, remember this one. Anyway, the fourth branch is anterior cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery. So, anterior cerebral artery, this one which I am now highlighting with this blue color on the left side, this one anterior cerebral artery. So, this one is the anterior cerebral artery. So, anterior cerebral artery are the smaller terminal branch of the internal carotid artery, it runs forwards and medially, it runs forwards and medially above the optic nerve to the commencement of the medial longitudinal cerebral fissure where it comes very close to the fellow and opposite side and it gets joined by a short transverse anterior communicating artery. Okay, so, there is a communicating artery. So, this is known as anterior communicating artery, anterior communicating artery. So, this anterior communicating artery will anastomos or join this two right and left anterior cerebral arteries, anterior cerebral arteries. Okay. Now, finally, the most important one is the middle cerebral artery. Okay. Actually, it, it does not form the circle of Willis, but it is one of the very important branch of the cerebral part of the internal carotid artery, middle cerebral cerebral artery. Okay. So, middle cerebral artery is the larger terminal 
branch of the internal carotid artery it appears to be the direct continuation of the internal carotid artery and carries carries about 30% of the carotid blood flow okay so this one this larger branch so this is the middle cerebral artery so you can see from each of this arteries that is vertebral arteries in the green here basilar arteries in the uh, yellow color here and the internal carotid artery with the, in the blue here all of this will give five five branches five branches from the vertebral artery five branches from this basilar arteries and uh, uh, five branches from this internal carotid arteries okay so out of this 15 branches or 15 arteries by this two important uh, uh, major blood vessel is vertebral arteries and the internal carotid arteries okay vertebral arteries will join and form the basilar arteries so basilar arteries nothing but for from the vertebral artery it will get originate so so ultimately so this basilar artery gives some branches and the internal carotid artery will give from branches out of this which branches will form the circle of willis is posterior cerebral artery and from the internal carotid artery posterior communicating artery anterior cerebral artery middle cerebral artery and the anterior communicating artery okay so they form the circle of willis so this is all about the formation of the circle of willis hope uh, this video was very effective to you so let me summarize what we have discussed today what is circle of willis basically it is the blood supply to the brain by the two important arteries which forms a circle a polygonal structure at the base of the brain in the interpeduncular fossa so this polygonal circle known as circle of willis so this circle of willis is basically formed by these four important arteries right and left internal carotid arteries and right and left vertebral arteries so these vertebral arteries will uh, join to form the basilar arteries and this basilar arteries uh, will form the uh, give some branches like posterior cerebral arteries and uh, post this uh, and now i'll highlight the circle of willis so this branch from the basilar artery that is the posterior cerebral artery with the black color posterior cerebral artery and this is the posterior communicating artery posterior communicating artery okay then we have the anterior cerebral artery anterior cerebral artery then anterior communicating artery okay these are the branches of the internal carotid artery so this structures together they form a polygonal structure and supply to the uh, brain and this is called as circle of willis so you have to remember the arteries which will form the circle of willis and their branches in the cranial cavity hope this video was very effective for you if you liked our video please subscribe the channel